as I imagine the peregrine flying through Salt Lake City, I would imagine myself uh, miniaturized to their size uh, and in a little hang glider. The reflections of the glass in my eyes and the news helicopter flying overhead and airplanes coming by and the sound of cars and the smell of exhaust. Those are things that the wild peregrine isn't dealing with on a daily basis. Life for a, for a peregrine, near as I can tell, they're really, I'll use this word, aloof. Well, even, even those crossing lights, the, the bird chirp signals and ambulance and sirens and so forth, they're entirely okay. It seems like all that racket, just not part of their world. They're all about flying. They, they're just, that's what they do. The high rises, uh, skyscrapers, tall office buildings, if you squint is the way I would describe it. In fact, they do look like, it appear to be a, a canyon land kind of environment. The flights that you see, when they take a corner around a building, they're gone. At the very top, where when they get thousands of feet over the city, of course, or hundreds of feet perched on those uh, tall skyscrapers, that's a different experience than down on where we, the unfortunate sad creatures on the ground, enjoy. Oh, I think you have to take hats off to any creature that can live to a, an environment that is as drastically altered as big cities and those by and large are all about high rises, concrete, steel, marble, brick, asphalt, and glass, which is the biggest hazard for falcons learning to fly in big cities. On top of which you have all sorts of other surfaces including highly polished uh, marble ledges and concrete, so on, and metal. Even antennas, if you think about it, whole different range of, of experiences to encounter that they have no knowledge of, how could they? So all they have driving them theoretically is their instinct and what they learn along the way. And you hope that they're fast learners. It's remarkable that a species is, uh, the term I would use is so plastic as to adapt to that alteration and so regularly continue to come back year after year sending a pretty obvious signal to us that, you know, it's messy, but we like it. It, it works for us. The term hell week or weeks describes that period of time every year when in fact the, the young birds are gonna learn to fly or earn their wings. The first flight is a big deal, and of course, they're, they're great observers, they're visual learners, peregrines are, and they're watching their parents, they're watching the pigeons, and they're watching everything go by. They're watching the cars, and they're watching you on your bicycle. And they're trying their wings. They'll put their, they'll put their wings out, and they'll clutch the, the uh, edge of the building and hold on and pump those wings and exercise and get some muscle going. The whole process of, of earning their wings or learning to fly is driven um, and orchestrated by the adults. I don't know uh, whether it's the fear of flying or the fear of the unknown, but they have to be essentially coaxed to put it in the air. And they watch mom go, go by and uh, she'll try and induce them to chase by coming right by them when they're hungry. She might even hold the food back a little bit and she'll let go of that bird when she's in proximity and their, their chase instinct will ignite. So what's going on here is the adults are purposefully trying to coax them to fly and the message is just abundantly clear that you know what, if you want to eat, put it in the air, you're a falcon. 